I'm recording this video in response to a US Senate video that I watched earlier today. Um, it's I'll include the link in the description. It's found on Rumble and it's under Dinesh D'Souza's account. It's he actually Dinesh, the the guy who posted it, says this speech is going to make a lot of people angry. <laughs> And, and he wasn't kidding. He was not. This is... I'm going to go through the details with you, but if you want to watch the video yourself, go down and look in the description. I'm just going to go through the details and I'm going to discuss what I think is actually being said here, regardless of the double think that they're trying to push on you. It's, it's disgusting. And to see it happening in the House of Parliament, in what's supposed to be the freest country in the world. It's troubling. It's very troubling. Um, and, and angering. It, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the video. Or, more specifically, it's ludicrous contents. Just uh, bear with me a moment while I find it. Right here, he, start, he starts off immediately and saying, last time the Senate convened, we had just reclaimed the capital from violent criminals. So, right, right off the bat, he's, he's disregarding the, the citizens' rights to defend their constitutional rights. It's very bizarre. He then goes on to say that the violent criminals stopped Congress from doing their duty. Right. Now, right off the bat, he's not making a distinction between those and Trump supporters because he's here to condemn Trump's actions and all people associated with him. This, it, it's an actual witch hunt, what they're doing, and they're, they're just painting with a very broad brush because it's convenient. If they can paint everybody with the same broad brush, then they can blame people for arbitrary reasons. That's what I'm trying to say. The mob was fed lies. They were provoked by the president. <laughs> this, this one's particularly good. Anybody who's watched the video back knows the president wasn't being provocative. He, he was just... He wanted people to show up to show their support for him. And it, it served a really good cause because it showed the world and anybody watching, except for mainstream media, because they didn't show you the whole group. It showed how many people actually support Trump. That there was there was physical evidence in the real world, because here's the thing: it's like we get all our information digitally. Mainstream media edit the information and the videos so that it appears differently. So if we're only ever getting an edited version of what they want us to see, how do we actually know what they're saying is happening is happening? Donald Trump in holding that rally and everybody turning up showed physical evidence in the real world where everyone else present could see exactly what was going on. He, he showed them up. He shined a spotlight on their corruption and their lies. And they are pissed. Um, then he goes on to say, as well as other powerful people. This is, this is great because not only did Donald Trump not encourage violence, but, and condemn it thereafter, but you know, the powerful people uh, were involved or responsible for it. It's about being able to convict a person for other people's actions. That, that's what they want to be able to do. It, it's this, this whole idea of incitement. Unless you're under duress, unless you're under serious duress, you can't compare what President Trump did in a, in a rally, in a presidential rally, to uh, within a free country still. Still. To, uh, to incitement within a country where dictators rule. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. The actions taken thereafter were under no duress. No duress. P people, were, people were free to make their own decisions beyond that point. Trump is not responsible for that. If Trump is responsible because of what he said to a group of people over in a small window of time, if he is 
culpable for their actions, right? Where does that leave the entertainment, the education, and the political systems? If you think about it, they have the greatest potential to incite anything else. They, they, they operate over broad expanses of time, so and they're unavoidable. It's not like we can avoid them. They're everywhere. Entertainment, uh, education's mandatory. You can't escape that. Um, and I'm not saying you should try to escape education. Education's important, but what they're doing is not education, in my opinion. R regardless of the fact, if what you've heard or what you've consumed can influence your actions then how much more culpable are those with greater the greater potential to incite over broader expanses of time than what Donald Trump said within a speech he, he, he's not forcing anybody to do anything it's, it's garbage they're talking out their asses but we pressed on we stuck together <laughs> he's, he's presenting himself as the hero figure here Let, let's ignore the fact of all the evidence of corruption and the resistance to inquiry, you know, he's he's the hero. They're the villains. They they pressed on. They uh, they tried hard. We certified that th this is him talking about after they took back the capital, talking about it as a as a victory. Um, <laughs> we certified the people's choice for the forty sixth president. It's not even so much that these things are guaranteed lies. It's the fact that they're refusing to acknowledge that there's a possibility there might have been an issue, or they might have failed to get the vote accurate. They can't even acknowledge that possibility. It's not even an... It's, without the certainty, they can't convince you that what they say goes. Not entirely. You know, corruption can't control you uh, with uncertainty because everything's a little up in the air. You ha you get to use your own personal discernment. So by using language like uh, we we protected the public vote, he's implicitly saying there's no alternative. You, what you think happened didn't happen. We are one hundred percent telling you the truth and you don't get a say in that you don't get to inquire into that even when physical evidence presents itself lavishly democracy's front porch again reinstating implicitly that this is the place of democracy uh, what you're doing is not democratic if it opposes what we say we're the democratic ones now shut up get in your corner and don't ask questions. The presidential process will continue as it has for more than 200 years. Okay, this, this is what he's saying next. You've changed nothing. That's what he's saying. You've changed nothing. Congratulations. Nice try. Do, do you know uh, in Soviet gulags, they used to get the... I heard this from John Peterson. They used to get the... Oh, yeah, it might have been it might have been the German ones actually um, the German prison camps. Either way, it, it's it's about the behaviour and what it means and what it implies more than anything else. Yeah. When when new prisoners used to come in, they would get them to pick up a heavy sack. Now at this point, they'd been in a, a train or they'd been carted and, and travelling for a long time. They were they weren't fed very well. They were hungry, tired. Um, so they were feeling weak anyway, so a heavy sack to them was even heavier. They used to go and pick it up when they first came in, and they'd carry it from one side of the camp to the other. And the camps weren't small. And then they'd get them to carry it back and put it in the exact same spot. And that is an expression of cruelty. It's saying to them, while you're here, nothing you do will count or matter. You don't matter. You are an object. You are a toy for us to play with. And you have no control. And your efforts will mean nothing. They will amount to nothing. You will amount to nothing. That's what he just said. In different words. I'll, I'll skip back and I'll repeat it for you. This is what's going to happen. He's telling you it is what's going to happen. 
our work for the American people will continue as it has for more than 230 years. That's an equivalent. It's an equivalent in words. You've done nothing. Your greatest efforts have changed nothing. You don't matter. Things are going to continue as normal. If you actually watch the video, the guy's smirking all the way throughout as well. It's a, it's a disgusting display. We're to have a common discussion and seek common ground. They've got no interest in common ground. They've displayed that recently. More lies. And check and balance one another respectfully where we must. That must on the end there as well. The, 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 the reason I'm focusing on specific words is because these people choose their words very carefully. They mean something quite often other than what they say or what's, what's clear. Um, or they want you to pick up on the threat. They want you to pick up on the fact that there's nothing you can do. but don't want you to be able to defend yourself against it. They want you to feel weak a lot of the time. That, that's, what, that's what this kind of person is about. We're all Americans, we all love this country, and we're all in this together. He's, he's cracking a smile at the end as well. He's, he, can't, he can't say it with a straight face. The disgraceful events of January the 6th when the capital was raided. raided. A great deal has already been said about the events of January the 6th, the disgraceful events of January the 6th. Again, it's uh, implying you don't get a choice in the matter. He's decided it's disgraceful, and it doesn't matter what the majority of Americans, uh, the clear majority of Americans, think about it. More will be said in the weeks ahead. This isn't over. He then goes on to relate the numbers of arrests and investigations undergoing. It's, it's a lot. And he says a number that is climbing fast, letting you know. Start behaving yourself. Start, start seeing things our way. Or there will be consequences. He commends the Justice Department, which again, they're there on their command. They're doing what they're being told to do it doesn't mean they necessarily agreed 100% with what they were being asked to do. It's their livelihoods and their family security at stake at the end of the day. They're, they're doing their job. The events of the 6th did not just leave the uh, members of Parliament, or, or the members of the Senate, exposed, but it left the law enforcers exposed as well. If you come for us, some of you are going to get hurt. And we'll make sure of that. He wants to express the level of respect he has for the Capitol Police, uh, the, the men and women that defended the Capitol on that day. That's what he's saying next. Well, well let's, let's take a few steps back. If they weren't a corrupt bunch of bastards, there would have been no issue with the inquiry. There would have been no question about voter fraud. And, and, and I want to clear something up real quick because people might say, oh, well, there's no clear evidence of voter fraud. It's vote verification. It is not rocket science. And somehow, as a society, we've managed to achieve one and not the other. That speaks for itself. When we want to do a thing as a human species, we find a way to do it. When the powerful want a thing done or achieved, they find a way to do it. They can put man on the moon, but they can't verify the vote to the public. Come on. So, if they weren't a corrupt bunch of bastards, and hiding in plain sight, none of this would have ever happened. So standing there and saying, oh, we, we feel bad for the, the police officers that were involved, and it was a mess for them, and one of them died, which he, he goes on to discuss in a moment. It's saying that we have the greatest amount of respect for them. It's a load of crap. It really is. They're, they're full of shit. He, he's, 
if they had any respect for the law enforcers, they'd create ideal circumstances so that there was trust between citizen and parliament so that this kind of thing didn't happen in the first place. They're full of shit. Neither the members of Senate nor the, the American people will ever forget. And you can actually stop that sentence there because what he says next is obviously a complete lie. He's letting you know that they will never forget. He then goes on to mention the person, the, the officer, that sacrificed himself to protect the capital and those inside it. Okay. Do you know what he doesn't mention? Do you know what he doesn't mention? The young woman, the reporter, who was shot dead, unarmed, by the police. And again, I'm not blaming the police. They're, they're doing a job. He was, maybe he was a little trigger happy. Um, but they're there to protect the capital. These things occur, these, these problems occur because there is a problem within the system itself at a higher level. These people are here to govern human affairs and they accept no responsibility when things go catastrophically wrong or when things, when there's civil upheaval. There's, they accept no responsibility but they accept responsibility for everything that goes right. Everything that's wonderful about America and the Western world is, that's on them. But any of the blame, yeah, you can blame that on everybody else other than us. It's more than comforting to come to a place of work that is protected, we're protected by such fine citizens. at risk to themselves. Again, reminding you, you are, come for us, other people get hurt. Uh, they're grateful to the rest of the law enforcers who helped secure the capital from the criminals. Again, criminals. It's all in the language. It's, it's all in the wording. They, they don't say anything by accident. It's all in what's implied because you can't defend yourself against something that's implied because they can just refuse to say they can refuse and say they didn't mean that it's about hiding the threat in clear sight but out of reach because evil and those that operate on its behalf are cowards the inauguration's going ahead as planned. Again, you've changed nothing. We salute you all. That's what that means. Okay, that's, that's the end of that video. I'm going to go to another one. You'll have to excuse me if I am very certain about what these people are saying. and It's just... You have to look, in, in times where what you're being told is, and in places where what you're being told is, isn't matching up with what you're seeing, you have to start questioning more deeply what is actually being said. Because it's clearly a lie. So if you think, oh, well, you're trying to put words in their mouth, it's because they're trying to put ideas in your head. If, if they weren't, what they're saying would match reality. It's, it, there's too much inconsistency. There's too much inconsistency. They're calling their own words into question. Okay, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking into their words because, uh, or analyzing them more closely because there's no suspicion, there's no reason to do so. I'm doing so because they've displayed clearly that they can't be trusted. And that the level of corruption goes high up. Okay, next video. It's uh, this. W this is the second link in the description. This is uh, Chuck Schumer. Make no mistake about it. What happened on the sixth was not a random event. He caused it. He definitely caused it. He then ordered them to come to Washington.
which he did, and then he then directed them toward the capital, which he did. But again, the word directed, it's, it's a little, it's what it implies. Something's direct, it's very certain in its, in its behaviour, it's very aggressive in its advance. It's, he told them to go over and let them know what they thought. He didn't say destroy the place. He didn't say destroy the place at all. It was about showing their faces. And the majority of the uh, patriots there, that were there to support Trump, were well behaved. In fact, when, um, when the Antifa antagonists and those that were nearer the building and those that were perhaps enticed into it out of the Trump crowd, the Trump supporters, they, uh, they actually created a barrier between them and those, them outside and those that were breaking shit. Plus, there's loads, of, there's loads of evidence to suggest. You have to look on that. Like, there's loads of evidence to suggest a lot of it was staged. Um, the, the antagonists... And this is something the mainstream media aren't showing you. The antagonists uh, were actually pulled away from the windows that were breaking uh, in a couple of places by the Trump supporters. So it, when they're not giving you all the information, you have to start questioning what it is they want you to believe. Because clearly there's a bias. They're trying to push an agenda. Otherwise they'd be showing you both sides. And I've heard a few people online saying, oh yeah, but now you're going over to Gab and... You're fighting just one side. You're becoming just as polarized. It's in response. You can't you can't compare an act of defense to uh, to the attack. The the, the get, moving over to Gab and moving over to Parler and these other platforms is in response to not being treated fairly, or to not being re represented as fairly. So of course they've got to go over to the other place, and it's. Yes, they're not defending the other side of the argument as strongly, but the mainstream media is handling that. It's not like the inf it's not like the information's being hidden on the other side. It's there. It's unavoidable. And also, am am I responsible to defend somebody else's side of the argument on a personal post? Am am I responsible to defend the other side of the argument? No. These social media platforms are responsible to provide a platform for free speech. Or at least, at least Gab and Parler uh, have been trying to do that. Twitter's clearly shown itself uh, to, to not be trustworthy on that front. Well, you can say Twitter's a private company and therefore can ban whoever it wants. Okay, so it's, it's just defending its side of the argument. It never said it was about free speech. Okay, so let's say Twitter's not about free speech. Explain to me then why they teamed up with other large organisations to dox Parler and to get them kicked off the Amazon servers. It was never about the breach of a private company's contract. It was always about the breach of a political agenda. Okay? And uh, an organised political agenda between many different on many different fronts because the evidence of that is that they attacked Parler as soon as they could because they were giving a voice to the other side of the argument so again going to a platform that is defending your right to free speech is not the same as denying somebody else the opportunity or potential to do that what I'm saying is if you believe that then you're full of shit too <laughs> That's amazing. Um, we need to ensure that the severest, the severest events ever influenced by a president will be met by the severest consequences allowed by the Constitution. The severest consequences of any president ever? Are, are you serious? Oh, he... And then he goes on, obviously, to say, though, it will be met with the severest consequences. Again, there are going to be consequences. Get yourself into line, or there will be trouble. That's what he's saying. Then he lists a few things that are going to be the consequences for Trump, including being barred from future office. Okay, so what he's saying now is, in the entire history of the United States, the presidents have only needed to be impeached twice in total. Okay, and then he goes on to say, in his single term, President Trump was it was attempted to impeach him twice, 
So a single president, this, this one president has been impeached as many times as the collective presidents that came before him. It's saying that like, like that couldn't be fueled by bias. Like there isn't evidence that that's fueled by bias to get him out. It's like, oh, that, that's Trump's fault. It's, it's again this implication, this implication that he's already at fault. There's no question. It's certain. You are wrong. Okay? Anyone who doubts that is wrong. It, it, it's like it's like a certainty. It's madness. Also, if like people believe there's that level of corruption at the top of the system, um, <laughs> maybe the evidence that that Trump's been impeached twice is because he's actually on our side. Because if those within the Senate are not representing the people, then anybody that they oppose is automatic can automatically be assumed to not be on their side. So, so if there is that level of corruption, which there seems to be clear display for it, the fact that Trump's been impeached twice is is like a gold star, mate. It is, give the give the man a gold star. Seriously, he's saying he's saying it like it's a bad thing. It's like we we the corrupt we the corrupt have had to impeach this man twice. We tried to get him out twice. We tried to get this this truth sayer out twice. Because he's revealing things we don't want him to reveal. He's saying things we don't want him to say. He's trying to fix the problem. We can't have that in the Senate. We can't have that in government. Somebody that actually wants to make the country better for the people that live in the country is... Oh, God. President Trump is a threat to our constitutional order. Again, everything's so certain. So certain. Um, and again, it's like he's a threat to the Constitution, the thing that everybody tried to defend on the 6th. The, the lies, the lies they spew, it's... It's so obvious. That, and, and they're not fooling people anymore. Ev everyone's aware. Everyone's aware, so uh, they're wasting their time. They really are. Even now, he has not accepted responsibility. Here's the thing, they need you to accept responsibility because they want things to go peacefully. They don't like their hand to be forced. Trump and his actions has forced their hand because he hasn't stepped down, he hasn't conceded, he hasn't said, yes, I was wrong. He won't give them that. And they need that because they're control freaks. And still falsely maintains that the vote was stolen. Again, right there. It's implicit. Falsely maintains. It's like, this is what you have to think. You can't think anything else. You can't think for yourself. Don't, don't use personal discernment. Don't make up your own mind. Once he leaves office, do we really expect him to change his tune? and accept the truth. <laughs> God, God, they are full of shit. Um, again, they're, ma they're making... They're making an assumption here. Now, I, I fully expect Donald Trump is going to continue to push uh, this movement, and I think he'll do it peacefully. And I think, I think he'll do that by trying to ensure that the vote is verifiable in the future. I think that's, that would be a good uh, direction for him to take because then this can't happen again in the future. And if he isn't barred from office, uh, he, can re he can try again. He can try again in 2024. Of course not. He will continue spreading lies. And stoking the grievances of his most radical supporters. <laughs> Those that feel wrong. It is the thing. The radical supporter is the one that wants his vote verified. That's your, that's your radical supporter. How dare you want to know the truth? How dare you want the truth to be verifiable? How dare you want trust between you and the government? What is wrong with you people? Animals. Wash your hands, you dirty pigs. To poison the public arena at a time when we must must get so much done. <laughs> uh, poison again, implicit. You know, this is it's it's uh, it's a virus. You know, um, 
<laughs> At a time that we must get so much done, you know, always, uh, he's, he's being an inconvenience. His, his pursuit of the truth is being an inconvenience on our lifestyles, on our ability to get done what we want to get done. Boo fucking who. After what Trump's done and the consequences of what he's caused, he should never, ever again be able to run for office. That's what he's saying next. No, no, this is, this is the best sentence in the whole video. All of us want to put this awful chapter in our nation's history behind us. All of us. Yeah, he's, telling, he's telling everyone what they think. It's like this, okay. When the right, and I don't like picking left and right, but, uh, but when, when the right, or, or, or we'll say Trump supporters, when Trump supporters, uh, when they fight for a thing, they don't think that they don't, they don't assume that Antifa want what they want. They don't try to convince Antifa that they want what they want. They say no, Antifa want that. We want this. They're not trying to. Con we're not trying to convince anybody of what they want. We're saying this is what we want. But here we've got all of us, the entire nation, want to put this terrible event behind us. And it's also, of course, implicit that therefore you must view the event as terrible. God. But healing and unity will only come if there is truth and accountability. Our truth. Their truth, I should say. That's the threat. You need to accept that you're wrong. Things need to go back to normal. You need to stop questioning. I'm going, to, I'm going to share a short clip with you and include it in the uh, video because it's it's very relevant to what's actually going on. Uh, stop inquiring into our behaviour. That's what he just said. Stop inquiring into our behaviour or we will not have peace and unity. Okay, now, now watch this clip that I'm, that I'm going to include. <laughs> Sir. Don't try to get on the good side. What is he up to? Why are we in the play? He's using this as a prop. It says that if two people are married, they're entitled to any money that either of them has. No, but it's just a play. He can't get a fortune by marrying me in a play. Oh, can't I? Conspirators. Caesar must die. Caesar must die. Caesar must die. In order to be a valid marriage, it has to be administered by a bona fide justice of the peace. It says so right here. Justice Strauss, are you ready for your debut? <laughs> oh, look at you, Violet. You look so beautiful. <laughs> you are the bride. I'm the judge. Who's the groom? No, Justice Strauss, you don't understand. The play is real. Yes. Yes, it must be real. That's why I cast you. All the other actors I saw lacked the proper, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Hair? Hands? Verisimilitude. Now remember, Justice Strauss, you must say the words exactly as you would in the real wedding. Get it absolutely right. Got a talent scouts in the audience looking for someone your age. It's all writing on this one. Oh, why did you have to tell me that? Oh, my God. Take it to makeup. Enjoy. Embrace the butterflies. This is ridiculous. Violet's only 14. She can't be legally married. She can if she has the permission of her guardian. And who's that? Oh, yes. Me! <laughs> Look it up, bookworm. Yes, once you say I do and sign the marriage certificate, you'll really be my loverly bride. You cook and clean and massage my bunions and clip my thick yellow toenails. Hey, marriage is no picnic. You gotta work at it. I'll never say I do. Never. I think you might. Once you look up there, Gladly. Let her go. Go! Put a hold on that. <laughs> if you don't say I do, or if anything should happen to 
interrupt this performance. I say one word into this, and down will come baby, cradle and all. <whistles> Clang! <clears throat> How could you? She's an infant! Oh, Violet. Violet, Violet, Violet. Violet. You're 14 years old. You should know by now that you can't have everything you want. You want a life of happiness, a roof over your head, a place to call your own and all that jazz. And what about what I want? I want that enormous fortune and for all investigations against me to cease. Yep. That, that's exactly, that's exactly what's going on. It's, it's all a stage. It's all a stage, it's all pantomime. They dangle the president in front of you, but he's, he's not the one with the power, and this has revealed that. It's ridiculous. That it, here's the thing, if, if, I was, if I was very, very smart, and very, very powerful, and very, very corrupt as well, and, and I was in a position to rule the world and get what I wanted, The smartest thing to do would be to stick a buffer between you and the general public. And the reason for that is... It... <laughs> but boxing coaches know this. That they, hold up, they hold up the pads for the boxer, don't they? You know, so, so that they're not smacking their hands. They wear the body pads so that when they're getting hit, it's not them getting hit. It's that buffer. It's something else. That's what's going on. That's the reality. What you see is just the buffer, it's just the pad. And before you know it, I can tell you right now what the next move of, of a, if I was corrupt and I was in that position, I can tell you now what the next move would be. What, what I'd do next anyway, if I was an asshole. i try to switch myself out, me holding the pads, i try to pass those pads on to somebody else, so that when you do actually get the guy holding the pads, you think, you think you've think you won. You think you've done it. You choreographed that. You organised that. You achieved that. But it, it's not the original guy holding the pads because they switched them out. Yeah? That, that's, what, that's what they do. They move around. They have to move around because otherwise people would eventually find them out. That's why uncertainty is such an important part of the recipe in finding truth. Because you never have it. You can never have it. That's why those in, those in power that are also dictators need to convince you that you already have the truth, so that you don't need to look any further. Yeah, leave that forbidden fruit alone, Adam. Don't you be touching it. Don't you seek outside knowledge. Don't you question. It's all going to be this one way. We already have the answers. There's nothing for you to do other than take over, or reproduce and die, quietly, preferably. You've totally lost your shit, dog. You're all over TV, destroying property, making unauthorized hits. You're causing the organization a great deal of embarrassment. The best thing for you to do is find some nice, dark, quiet place and just die. Just die. Do you think I've got cunt written on my forehead? We are not sweeping such a severe charge and severe actions under the rug. That's what he said next. There's somebody's gonna have to pay for this. That's what he's saying. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to give me something. What a whiny little bitch. Uh, now they want to uh, convict the president for high crimes and misdemeanors. <laughs> God, they're nutters. They're actual nutters. And if it's successful, there will be a vote on barring him from running ever again. And I'm sure that won't be where the consequences end. I'm sure it won't be. High crimes and misdemeanors. You, you think they're gonna set? They're gonna settle. People like that, control freaks like that. You think they're gonna settle for barring him from office? No. no they've made they've made what they are perfectly clear. Okay, that's that's the end of those two videos, and that's this angry rant over. Um, I, I just. <sighs> 
because of the honesty and the courage of President Trump these last few years, in uh, the, the guy's got skin like a rhino. Yeah, Be because of the honesty and, and what he's gone through for the general public, it just it upsets me to see him being targeted like this. And and it's not just me; it's it's upsetting a lot of people as well, because we know it's bullshit. We know what's going on, and the fact that they expect us to believe it just shows how thick they actually are. The arrogance of these fragile men that fancy themselves gods, that fancy themselves above God and truth. The, these Pharisees, it's unparalleled. Because here's the thing, you are temporary. Truth is permanent. It's going nowhere. The truth is going nowhere. And you can't beat it. And if you pervert it for personal gain, there are consequences. These, these people are talking about consequences for Trump? Running around, doing whatever the hell they like, answering to nobody? And expecting there to be no consequences? You can't, you can't mess with the structure of reality. You can't oppose the truth and expect there not to be consequences. There will be. They're going to lose. You can't, you can't beat truth. If you waver too far from it, tr truth's what keeps you alive. It's what sustains you. You know, from an evolutionary perspective especially, you know, it's that thing, it's those standards that must be met in reality. And if you don't meet them, you die. <laughs> and something else takes over. You know, some other species survives, you know, and, and we've forgotten that somewhere along the way. There are objective rules, and they are different to the rules and standards that men set. These men are not gods. They don't set the standards of reality. Not by themselves. They don't set the standards for how everybody else must live, how everybody else must feel, what everybody else must think. They're not gods. They don't, they don't even warrant being called men with, with behaviour like this. It's, it's mental. I mean, they are fragile worms that lack the spine to exist in a world against any weight of opposition. That's why they have to take out the opposition. And, and challenges to what they believe as well because of an incurable absence of spine. But congratulations on your win, on revealing that you will never be as powerful as this man and as these people. Thanks for watching, and God bless you all. Of course, that's just my opinion, but if it's not my opinion, then why am I not entitled to it?